Today I'm going to show you how to take a hobby PCB RS HFIQ transceiver and turn it into an IQ32 standalone transceiver using an IQ32 upgrade kit. First thing we have to do is make some changes to our RS HFIQ. There's six little jumpers on pins here that have to be removed to install the IQ32. They come off pretty easily, generally just use your fingers. And depending on uh, what you were using your RSHFIQ for, there may be a jumper on the power switch contacts as well. So I'm going to remove that and expose those contacts. You may want to bend those up at a 45 degree angle to make it easier to put the power switch plug on when we get to that. Next thing we're going to do is remove the Arduino. Typically insert a small screwdriver and gently lift it up just a little bit on one end and then put the needle nose under it on the other end so it doesn't go back down when you pry up the other side. And then lift. At this point you can take it off with your fingers. Uh, handy little thing for projects and it won't be needed in the final uh, uh, installation. Now we're going to turn it over and we're going to look right here. There's two little sets of solder contacts that need to be bridged. And this increases the transmitter gain because the IQ32 only has a 3.3 volt beta H curve. And we're going to tin it with the soldering iron, get a little bit on, and then Add enough so it makes a little bead that covers both pads. And it can be a little tricky, but if you go straight up, I don't know if the camera can see that, but there's a little bead that covers both of those pads. I'll put pictures in the manual so you can really see it pretty well. And I like to uh, move the flux off a little bit. Keep the circuit balanced. Paper towel. Uh, now the uh, RSHFIQ is ready to be installed. So I'm going to take the, uh, the box with the upgrade kit and I'm going to unbox it here. A little bag of uh, some uh, miscellaneous parts. We have a uh, wrapped up extrusion which has some panels in it. Hammond case and the uh, IQ32 process report. Set the packaging aside. Slide the uh, IQ32 out of the uh, enclosure. Now you'll notice the enclosure already has the rubber feet installed on the bottom. The thumb screws are inserted here. These are for the tilt stand. And uh, they have to go in these positions because they're tapped deeper than the other mounting holes. So we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, our next step is to connect the RSHFIQ to the IQ32 board. And we do that by opening our bag and taking the uh, row of pins out. And these mount in here, so this board takes the place of the Arduino Nano that we just removed. I find that uh, working from one side towards the other side uh, helps rather than trying to do them all at the same time. Now on this side it doesn't sit completely, or seat completely, there's a little gap between the, the connector and the header. Then you take a pair of diagonal cutters carefully separate it into the other side, which you can now put in this set of headers. And again, working from one side to the other um, is much more effective than trying to push them all in straight at once. So at this point, we should be able to plug the two boards together. Uh, the Arduino pins hit first, but then there's the uh, uh, I and Q audio in and out pins that go right there. Then there's a power pin that plugs together just like that. Um, and 
and that's how it uh, that's how the two boards are made at this point I'm going to prepare the power switch. We want that to be about three inches long. And then I'm going to strip the ends a little bit. Same with the other lead. And then, because the plastic's probably soft, I'm not going to touch it for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Let it sort of uh, uh, harden up. I'm done with the solder iron, so I'll turn that off. Now you see that the, you've made a switch assembly um, with this very light amount of solder on the terminals, but it still makes good color. Okay, the next step is to take the panels, I've removed the craft paper from them, and uh, attach the serial number label right here above the headphone jack. Then we turn over the two egg panels, and we add little pieces of black tape to the back side. And the reason for this is um, there's a little bit of manufacturing tolerance, uh, which can cause a gap between the front panel and the side panel. And on some of the units, it rattles a little bit. And it's much easier to just put a couple pieces of tape on it um, before you put it together and find out that it rattles and then have to take it apart and do it again. So just four little pieces of black tape. Mess out of that one. It goes just below the, the opening for the handle. Uh, and it'll, I'll show you where it hits. It hits the sides of the front panel and makes it nice and secure. Then we're going to take the extrusion. And it's very important that these thumb screws end up in the slots where they are because those are tapped very deep and the other ones are not tight quite as deep. The thumb screws are tapped so you can tighten them up really really pretty tight without having to worry about uh, stripping. I'm going to put the end with the headphone jack on first. And when I go into our bag and we're going to get some of the uh, screws. There, there should be six of them. I'm going to put them in the three places where the thumb screw does not go. Tighten these down all the way right now. We're going to find one of the little tilt legs, which is this uh, funny little piece of metal up here. And the thumb screw goes through that and into the last hole. And so you can sit this at any angle and stand the case up. Uh, operate at an angle other than perfectly straight up and down. 
Next thing we're going to do is slide the uh, circuit board assemblies into the case. The lower board go, has two empty slots below it, and there's three empty slots between the two of them, uh, and then there's four empty slots above them. You may slide in just like they uh, just like they fit in there, just perfect. Next thing to do is take your power switch assembly, and then you should probably point the on part of it towards the 13.8 volts there. That makes it easier for you to when you're, you know, reaching the side to know which way is on and off. Now we've got to get in between these two boards and plug this thing in. I like the little metal contacts that go up, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I kind of plug it right in like that. And then kind of route the cable over the power jack and into that slot on the board, which we've uh, left for you to be able to do that. Now slide the boards almost all the way out, not quite. Remove the protective coating from the LCD and set the front panel down. Now, now you notice it's got two little cutouts on the side. That allows it to sit in there in between the two without having to be slid in all exactly at the same time. The whole thing kind of slides its way down there. Um, you may have to wiggle it up and down to get it between the two screws, but it snaps right on. Um, careful of the power cable, the, or the power switch wire, kind of tuck it up in there. And then sort of repeat the process you did on the, uh, on the other end, uh, adding the three regular screws. Now, I would not recommend using um, a power screwdriver to, to insert these screws. Um, you are screwing steel screws into an aluminum extrusion. Um, so they don't you can't really over torque them too much before uh, uh, something's going to give. And there's no real reason to. They're not particularly long. Uh, just use a number one Phillips to tighten them down. And tighten them down nice and neat. And then put the other tilt leg on. complete at this point. The next step is to install the knobs. Um, the knobs are a two-part deal. You have a base part uh, and then a cap that goes on top of it. And since they, they both, in, in addition to turning, they have a little push button that you use to control some of the features. Um, we're going to have to use a shim to make sure we don't push the knob down too far when we're putting it together. My experience is the nut has to be loosened. Now on the larger nut we use a 7 16th nut driver and it slides right over the, uh, the shaft like that. Push it down and then push the center in. Then tighten the nut. At this point we can slide the shim out and the knob should, uh, uh, the switch should work without any kind of interference with the case. Now the, uh, the smaller knob has to be higher because it comes in contact with the side of this case if it's not exactly the right level. And we're using a 932nd nut driver and we loosen it up a couple turns. Sit it down on there and kind of push it and then push the center down again too. Yeah. We'll move the shims, give it a little test too. The plastic inserts um, have like a notch in them and there's two little uh, ribs on the inside of the, the knob. We've got to kind of line those up together and just push it down. Uh, the small one's the same way, there's two in the cover and they have to be lined up. 
you're ready to go. Grab some DC power here. first time it comes up, uh, it's going to uh, ask you to calibrate the uh, screen. Uh, so take a stylus or something and just uh, tap five X's. And then it says tap in the same location three times to quit. And, uh, and you're on the air. Uh, attach your speaker mic and uh, go. Sounds like the dog wants to go out. Thanks for watching.